G'day, now you can hear me. Sorry about that. Uh, I just thought I'd say hello to everybody. I hope you're all are well. And I've got nothing prepared today. So it's just a general to keep things going and to say hello. G'day, Baker Perkins, Wombat. How you going, fellas? Um, so if you please, if you've got any questions, I'll be more than happy to help because i got nothing for you. Aussie Autos, how you going? Nice to see you, mate. Uh... I've, I could probably show, what else could I share? I'm going to have to do something. Live background. This one, that's another thing. There's another background. Um, where's another thing? Humic acid, no. Nope. 10 benefits of cannabis, we all know about that stuff. What's some interesting things? I've actually, there's an interesting thing of, what was it? It's all of the slow-mos of, Let's see if I can find that. That was pretty interesting. It's like a slow-mo of how plants grow. I remember, I remember it from a while ago. Uh, I'll just have a quick look through here while you just think of any questions, if you have any. It's going to be short today. This will be pretty interesting. Not staining. I'm just going through my files to try and find it. It's like, it's pretty interesting. It's It's... It's fun, but I've got a lot of files here to look through, and it wasn't organised. Uh, Phytologist, nope. Microbiology feeding charts, nope. Come on, you're there. I know you're there somewhere. Canvas permits, nope. Register. Uh, I'm just looking for a cool slides of slow mo plants growing in different ways. It's time lapse. That's the word I was looking for before, sorry, time lapse. Uh-oh, come on. There's too many things to go through. Montedrenesis, it's a very good beneficial bug. Uh, gee whiz, I'm trying, I'm trying. Is that, no, oh, I got a bit excited there. I thought it was it. Come on, where are you? And then I'll go back to say good day to chat. So I'm just going to try and pull up this slow mo time lapse of plants growing. I got a few cannabis time lapse ones too. Uh, old school hip hop, nope. Oh, far out. I haven't been there for a while. Um, I'm just still trying to find it. Um, Job week, nope. All right, I'm nearly going to give up. This isn't very prepared. Sorry about that. Plant metabolics, nope. Ah, gee whiz. Oh well, I give up on that one. Back to ch back to chat. How you going, Cool and Luke? Anyone know where to get Floriflex dry powders? Ask Aussie Autos. What's the subject? I have a million cues. Cool and Luke says, I love time lapse grows. Yeah, mate. Um, there's no subject today. It's just a hello to keep things going, I suppose. I'm not going to prepare much through Christmas period. Um, I'm going to wait till in the new year when I'm going to do that breeding and genetics talk because that's there's so much on that. That's really cool too. Um, so, yeah, if you've got any cool hand, Luke, you can ask a few cues, mate. 14 branches from one node. Have you seen it? I don't like some of the words that you were saying about me through the week. 14 branches. Um, I watched one baker where they were two plants and one got trimmed and one that didn't reach it. Okay. I watched, I watched one baker when there was two plants and one got trimmed and one that didn't reacted to its mate and and that one didn't react to its mate okay that's the way uh yeah plants are all different they do speak to each other through allelopathy um what else can i add cool and luke i have a mutation of a plant from the trying node two sets yes it's called a brb dominant gene mutation uh, I have a 
with some Scotty cake and a coffee. That's the way. Biscotti cake, I reckon that is. Yum. Biscotti's the new, the two o, the latest one. It's good. Well, I'm a bit struggling here. What's some other questions you have, Cool and Luke? Mick, how you going, mate? Good mix. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, I don't know about the coffee. Nah, sorry, Mick. Disagree with you from my perspective because I don't like coffee. I'm caffeine sensitive. <laughs> but I reckon it would be, this biscotti cake would be a bloody good mix, mate. I don't like 50% stuff. Said that about me, unfortunately. Part of putting up with that. I'm not the kind of dude to hold stuff against people. Well, I I, for one, I don't get into drama. So that's it. I don't get into drama. <laughs> Drama's a waste of time, mate. Uh, love it, Mick. Hell yeah. Walking lightly. Wow, we Alaskans in the house. How's it going? You come walking lightly when there's no show prepared. I got nothing prepared, mate. This is just a, a to say good day and a bit of a Q and A, and yeah, that's about it. I've got a genetics and breeding one that I was going to put on last week that um, I just wasn't. It was too in depth. It's going to go, I reckon, for a good hour and a half. And I really, that's my topic. I really love that topic, that and microbes, organics. Um, so I wanted to spend time on it, so I didn't go through it last week. And now we're into the Christmas period and all sorts of things are going on in Christmas period. So I haven't got time to spend through the Christmas period. But um, early next year, I'll do the breeding one and then I'll get back into it. Sorry, walking lightly. <laughs> good effort though, mate. <laughs> Uh, there's um is there any questions what i've got anything emergency i can show you i feel a bit slack sitting here just looking at one blooming page and nothing's happening um i should try and look for that i'll look for that thing again then I wonder if i put it in my no it won't come up if i type it into my thing my space bar Cannabis Health News. I suppose that's something. 100 into 900 pre-rolls. Holy mackerel. Good luck walking lightly. So you're 100 in of 900. He's got to roll 900 pre-rolls and he's only done 100. Wow, how's your hands, mate? <laughs> and I might be a bit scared. All shaky. Um, I don't know if this will get me a strike, but I can go and show this page. Yo, 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 says Zia, the Aussie. How's you going, Zia? Cool and Luke, I'm having a mind blank. I have like three cues. I need to write them all down. Sorry, Aussie. No worries, mate. One lads. HG. Oh. Okay, looks like that must be a cultivar. Okay, that's yeah, pretty strong. In the 30s, mate, that's pretty good. Um, I'll just try and show this. This is a... Should I? Probably get strikes. YouTube's funny, eh? All those strikes. Um, well, Ireland's getting closer to legalising. Switzerland's weed care trial of adult use cannabis is reached launch in next month. New research promises in cannabis for Tourette syndrome. Number of, I'm not going to read that one. Very good. What's happening now back here? Any questions yet? Uh oh. <laughs> um, I'm struggling a bit. Aussie Autos says that is gmo cross bruce banner oh yeah yep it's a full-on name though that's not a very that might be a striking name <laughs> that's why i don't want to say it <laughs> you know what it stands for hey jamie hoskins g'day mates first time sitting in from vancouver island really whereabouts new island are you? i lived in the middle of it for a couple of years three odd years very nice place and a few people from the middle Actually, I lived down and, uh, for nine months down in Couchin as well. 
down Lake Couchin. That was pretty good. I think Hoover Island's awesome. There's some nice, really nice people there too and a nice attitude towards life. It's, yes. Oh, he's up in Comox. Oh, yep. Yeah. Up in the middle. I was a little bit south of Parksville. Actually, Comox, you probably, you know, if, um, yes, you do. I'm not going to shout names and stuff. Weird name, eh? Yeah, it is Aussie Autos. That's the, the GMO cross. Bruce Berner is a weird name. Fancy naming it that. That's just going to get all sorts of problems down the track. But at least they didn't. A lot of people might know what it stands for, I suppose. Jamie, today is just a saying good day. And usually I have topics where I'll show my slides and stuff and cannabis news. And I don't have nothing this week. And next week, I'm just keeping it real and just saying hello, asking if anybody's got any questions. I can share some of my personal slides from my uni studies and that. But um, other than that, I haven't got much. I'm sorry. Uh, maybe next week I could have a um, open stream. That might be pretty fun and see who wants to come up. Actually, that's a good idea for the Christmas break. How about that? I'll have an open stream. Oh, really? In seven days? It sounds... That's the 27th and 14th, uh, Christmas Eve. But yeah, I'll do that next week. So for people, if they want to come up, and it won't be smoking on stream and stuff like that. Just be a general chit-chat saying good day. If you want to smoke, get out of the camera shot. <laughs> Just don't get any strikes towards me. So I'm trying to do the right thing. Uh, cool and Luke says... Oh, Jamie says... Awesome, just fun to chill. It is, mate, with like-minded folk. Yes, we all smoke and think the similar things. It's good. Cool and Luke says, I often think about plants controlling the rhizosphere and the, out and the outer conditions fighting against it. The plants trying to control pH and specific cultures and conditions like moisture control. Um, the plants are similar. They have an immune system as well. And they self-regulate themselves and if you've got their health in good order they can um, access those genes which will regulate their plant's immune system so it's similar to our bodies if we keep our body in prestige health and we don't have any autoimmune we will generally be able to get through problems same with plants so by building them up is very important and the what's um the growth differential balance hypothesis says about the difference in feeding synthetics to feeding organics. And it brings out the difference in the plant control system, how it regulates itself. Like if you're giving synthetics, you're just bottle feeding it and it doesn't know when to kick in its immune system, doesn't know when, it can't, it's not defending for itself. It's like getting fed or through an IV for a drip. So um, that's why you have to give pesticides and herbicides and all that sort of fungicides stuff with bottle nutrients uh, plants where if you're organics, you don't have to do as much as that because the plant does fend for itself. And it gives a better terpene production too because when it fends for itself, its pathways that it's processing are through its terpenes um, to fend off and to attract different things. So in general, you know, I hope that helps. Cool and Luke, the plant's trying to control. Because to show slides for that, that's, a, that's massive. To go through their um, immune system and their pathways for that and their re reactive oxygen species how they're trying to work with them. It's full on. Hey, Lene, how's it going? Lene's in the house. Today's Lene is just a hello. Um, nothing's prepared because in the Christmas break, it's pretty, pretty, pretty rushed. So um, I got nothing. So it's just a Q&A really to say hello. And next week is a open stream. So if anyone wants to come up, you can come up too. Um, but we won't be smoking on, on air. If you want to smoke, just hop out of the camera shot. But that'll be next week's. Um, yes. All right. It's a good question, Cool Hand Luke. Thanks for keeping the, the action going today. Because it's going to end pretty soon. <laughs> Sorry. But it is. I'm not going to waste everyone's time, too. We're just crapping on about nothing. Um, so, is there anything else anybody would like to ask been going 15 minutes or I'd like to maybe answer one or two questions maybe go for 20 minutes uh, I'm not sure what else to say what else can I share no can't share don't want to share screen 
sorry um, just trying to keep it good so that's it I think it's gonna end I'm trying to keep it interesting but I'm struggling a bit uh, 10 health benefits of cannabis we all know them oh the growth growth balance growth no it's a growth balance differential hypothesis I'll have a look interesting yeah it is pretty cool yeah, it's good There's, it gives two reasons and it's similar to what I just explained uh, north north here you go north north freezing your your blimmin your behind off mate you got all your HPS is firing to warm up your place <laughs> talking about moisture is there an ideal moisture range for your substrates oh yes because your roots feed through oxygen they get oxygen out of the air and if you have water in there around your roots it's going to be 10,000 times slower to get oxygen out of the water than it is out of the air so that's why the plants really suffer if there's too much moisture in it so keeping high moisture is a problematic unless you've got some your species um, is your cultivar is adapted to those conditions you might be right but in general you don't want it uh, you want I use 50% perlite so I no matter how wet it's going to be it will still have some breathability um, is there an ideal moisture well 40 to 60 it depends on what you want your roots your rhizosphere which is the area around your roots you want water to be in contact with it because once it doesn't go in contact that's when it'll start to not suck up everything it's not suck when photosynthesis happens it forms a pressure and if there's no roots there there's no pressure to osmotic pressure to give the water potential so the plants will wilt so you always want to maintain that but keeping a, a high amount of air so that's why a lot of people will do the drip feed and have high success rates with drip feeds because it kind of keeps that air ratio up that air to water ratio um, I hope that helps mate north north good question though thank you uh, different types of yellowing yep there's all different types of yellowing than mostly nitrogen magnesium problems I barely made it all good uh, you can talk about anything it's all gold he says cool and Luke I find it hard to I find it hard though mate just to talk in general I'm not one just to talk I don't like talking having questions I like talking and answering but making up things I think people that um, they're not interested type stuff so it's hard for me to crap on and I don't really like talking about my research my sorry my experiments because they're still in happening so unless there's a question it's hard for me to sort of crap on <laughs> cool hand Luke thanks so mate PTP how you going cool hand Luke uh, shower getting hair all pretty <laughs> that's the way PTP Baker hope so indoor I oh yeah Aussie autos reckon is indoor living soil organics I just go by first knuckle rule if dry water yeah so put your finger out and there's that little line if you in your finger you got what's that one two three sort of lines in your finger where it kinks and then the first little kink bit where you can move it that's where Aussie autos goes to just in general another thing too which you should get used to is lifting the pot up because the roots have all different types of air pockets that they'll form if you've got bugs in there too they can also develop air pockets worms and things so a good way is to a good rule of thumbs just to lift your pot because with, especially when you're getting bigger pots it's really hard to know what's going on deep down if you um, when you're making compost in general if it goes more than two feet they say in 60 centimeters they say not to have it through that because it can um, have anaerobic pockets in there which can breed all your bad problematic pathogens um, so yeah the lifting of the, the so when you weigh it when you water your pot just lift it and you'll know all oh, right that's pretty heavy and then before you water them just give it a little bit of a lift so you'll just know after doing lifting hundreds and hundreds of pots you'll go be able to develop this, this internal skill that no you'll know when a pot's dry just by lifting it up that's the way I do it 
Um, but good on you, Aussie Autos. It's another technique. It's all about techniques. It's, see, there's so many ways to do medical cannabis, and it's whatever suits your technique. No way's wrong, just other ways are probably more beneficial and better than others, but no way's wrong. You're still going to get a result, or you might get even a failed result, but it'll still be a result. And then you'll learn by that and, and change your some setups or your techniques for the next run because you might have different conditions to where I am, different bugs, different abiotic and biotic stresses, which comes under all of those titles. Uh, walking lightly. Bottom water, bottom watering and top light drench feeding seems to be most beneficial. Change my mind. See, that's something that suits his conditions really well. So he's dialed his in and found that that's worked with him. I've dialed mine in and found that I like lifting the pot. Aussie Auto's dialed his in, he found the finger method. <laughs> Heaps of different stuff, mate. There's no wrong way. It's just ways that are better than the others. Cool and Luke says, what companion plants do you recommend to keep pests at bay? Um, chrysanthemums, marigolds, they are really good. And the botanicals, I should look up the botanical section. There's, I used to plant alfalfa, like a legume in between... If you're doing outdoors, you can do alfalfa, like you do a legume, and that attracts nitrogen-fixing bacteria in the root nodules. They'll stay in there until the plants go. That'll have nitrogen in it. They'll break it down, and it'll be a free source of nitrogen. Most nitrogen is it'll get leached out, being there's two, the two forms, the ammonium, which is the has the plus, the ca positive cation, and the nitrate, which is the negative anion. And the... Negative anion doesn't have anything to attach onto, so it just mostly gets leached out. So by having those legumes, it gives you another source of nitrogen. Um, what's a companion plant? Alfalfa is what I sometimes do. I'll sprinkle some alfalfa seeds in a pot, and it's just other roots to take up in the soil, and that attracts other different bugs into it. So I find that they go into it, leaving the medical cannabis plants alone. Good on you, Cool and Luke. What companion plants? Yeah, marigolds, um, chrysanthemums. Chrysanthemums, actually, pyrethrum come from chrysanthemums. You know, pyrethrums. Good question, buddy. Um, but change. I was definitely use weight also. Oh, yeah, Aussie Autos does the weight thing too. Feeding from the bottom. I had a problem with wet roots, so I reported the plant repotted the plant and put a base of clay to absorb the excess moisture um, clay doesn't have any air gaps in it and it's not going to breathe it might absorb the moisture but that's what it'll do i tried weighing the pots but they rocked around on the scale and would read accurate <laughs> cool and luke says um yeah just try it you can I've, I don't have to actually lift them with two hands now. I can just lift the corner of with one hand, lift up, and I know from one hand quickly how wet or how dry that pot is. The plant changed 24 hours and more healthy. Yeah, it probably won't last. Clay to absorb moisture? No. Um, it does absorb it, but it's just going to retain it. And if you want that around your roots, you want some air in there. So, yeah, it will massively retain it. That's it. Grow the healthiest plant you can, says Baker. Always, mate. Uh, I put perlite in the bottom. I put perlite in the bottom or bio... I think he says, can I put... Should I put perlite in the bottom or biochar? Um, I put perlite on the bottom. Um, biochar is not quite as aerated as perlite because it's got houses for little microbes to house in where I find perlite... It's sort of a density where they can just house on the outside and they tend to not colonize it very much. So I put about an inch layer of perlite down the bottom just so if any water does build up, is it's never going to saturate the roots, killing the oxygen source. Biochars, I would mix through my substrate as a blend mix. That's where yeah, it's so beneficial, biochar. In organics, I'd water is feed from the lower location and root champs to create bigger tap root. What? I'd, is to create a bigger, okay. Feed in the bottom is great. Productivity. Something tells me Mr. Luke will have some fire. 
just make soon. Mycorrhizae for monster roots. Yes, actually mycorrhizae, it's a natural phos phosphorus deriving source. So the roots only put out so much when you put in beneficial fungi, they will extend your root system by colonizing very fast and they will pull nutrients out of the soil and put them to the roots. So they'll transport it through their hyphae and excuse me, and really be beneficial. And also another thing about having that is your beneficial bacteria and uh, your beneficial fungi is it makes no room for any pathogens or anything to start and colonize. If you've got a nice big colony of mycorrhizae, good on your Aussie autos. Any luck, Mick? Poops has the scale water system. Yes, he does. Yes, this friend of ours, Poops, he's got a he grows on scales, permanently set up digital scales that are linked up through a PLC, through a Audrino system. And he did, he's done this for a few years now. He's dialed it in really well and he's getting some really, really good results. Um, at the first, we were all thinking, what? No way. It works and it costs a bit, but who cares? It's another system, another way of getting the moisture, getting the weighing your pot, like you mentioned before, Cool and Luke, about how do you do the moisture in the soil? This has sort of been like a topic on soil. This is good. This is another, that's the fourth technique. So see, there's so many different ways to do things. No way is right, just whatever suits you. Good on your walking lightly. Look forward to that, Luke. Can a terra medium works good? Oh yeah. Monty, how's it going, Monty? How's it going, Mr. Monty? Monty today is an unorganized show. It's nothing to do with my slides and my preparation. It's quite the opposite. It's I'm unprepared and it's leading to Christmas. So I'm just not doing it at the moment. I'm really keen to do that breeding one. Um, so it's a bit of a break. So I'm just doing a bit of a Q&A for probably this week. Next week, I'm going to have an open stream so anybody's welcome i can only have six people up through my stream yards but i'll try and if you please smoke off air if you want to smoke because i want to try and keep it clean no swearing etc um this is good thanks for your questions guys look at half an hour wow thank you very much if there's no other questions quick write your questions right now i'll give you 30 seconds for the delay um because otherwise if there's not I think this has nearly been a show. Well, not a show, but an effort, whatever you want to bloom and call it. <laughs> uh, change it. We can see some more trichomes. Well, this CC is live. Yes, he is unorganized today. Usually I have all the slides and topics and all sorts of so up-to-date information with all cannabis studies and experiments with the medical cannabis university people have done. It's great. Uh, what can I show you is all right well I've waited for the 30 seconds there's been no ones coming through I want to say thank you to everybody who's turned up today and asked the questions it has been a bit of a moisture show I can nearly put that in the title actually I will because of cool hand Luke I think it's moisture show he got that question and then all of a sudden everyone started talking about it we got I think four techniques out the ways that work for different people to moisture of the substrate good on you mate you made the title of the show <laughs> cheers to you thanks and thanks for everybody else rocking up i'd like to go a bit longer but i don't know what to talk about so we'll have to wait till next week when we can have an open stream and probably go a bit longer that'll be a bit more funner yeah all right good stuff half an hour thank you everybody googly keep it Moist, as Wally would say. Oh, geez. Moisture meter. Yes, oh, that's oh, good on you, Baker Perkins. I'll just throw that in because it's a. I, I use there's a capacitive moisture meters and resistive moisture meters. Uh, I use a capacitive one because it puts, it puts a like, little bit of a charge in there to give a more accurate reading. I find um, resistive coils. I, to be honest, I haven't used them, but from having electrical engineering background. It makes more sense being capacitive and my probes i get about two years out of each probe and the probes are so cheap 
uh, soil moisture meter. It's a digital one, and it only gives out a number. It's a 12-volt system, and it's just a good indication of what's going on. I bury it about, what's that, three inches down, 75 mil down, and it stays permanently in the soil for two years. Oh, you know, I replace it, whatever, but then I get two years out of each probe, and it gives me a good indication around flush time when how wet and how much it's retaining the moisture. So I can see, oh, wow, I might give it an extra day and not give it a, feed, a water or a flush this time. So it's I really like it for that reason. And also it might be good at the start just to work out your substrates to make sure that you're not overwatering or underwatering it. You can also program those soil moisture meters to come on and to come off. They've got a relay inside of them. I made a, a little moisture station, temperature uh, a substrate station actually i shouldn't really show that because that's really related to this moisture one uh all right actually i will sorry people saying later and everything sorry i'm going to show is that the probe one it's a u here you go i'll just i'm going to find this video oh uh this might take a while hell it's not in me rad bud pics i think moisture oh jesus it was quite it was in canada actually i made it so it was quite a few years ago i'll have a look up here uh oh gosh date type um it's got moisture station written somewhere maybe heating sorry i'm still trying to look through because it's pretty cool it's a good, um, I was impressed with it. Might help other people. And because this is a moisture related thing. There it is. Auto H2O system. Sick. Found it. Two minutes it goes for. All right. Here you go. I can play the video. Um, keeping in mind, this is in Canada when I was working under the ACMPR license. Uh, I'll just go up and read things later. No, not yet, Lene. Cheers. Still here. Resistive. Yep, this will show you. Check out this. You can get them for your lawn. Yeah, you can cool and loop, but they're, they're the probe ones. You want digital ones that connect permanently. The probe ones, they're, they're, really, they're not really accurate. I'm trying to share it. So present. Share screen. Oh, I can go share video file. Oh, then it's got to look up the blooming video file. I'll do it the other way. Present, share screen. I'm just going to share my whole screen. Tie screen. There we go. Oh, I hope you can hear it. My new automatic dripper feed. Dripper feed system. This is off that moisture probe. That's the contactor which goes on to that's wired up to the relay system off the so it's just a probe that's just a wire that throws off to the relay off the meter itself and that will turn it on and off that valve runs off the relay that's the relay that goes on to the relay system off the meter itself and that will turn it on and off that valve runs off the relay that goes on to the relay system off the meter itself and that will turn and then this bottom bit here is the 12 volt wires that goes into it. And then you can program it with the three numbers to turn on and off at different stages. So when that gets to, I'll program it, I think it's 60 to come on and then it turns off at 70. So it's a 91 now because I watered it <laughs> uh, when I was testing it and shit. 
and it's fucking works sweet. I'm so stoked. Jesus. So it's really cool. So it's theoretically, I can leave this for a week and it can just do its thing. And yeah, when I want to feed it, I turn this tap off for a day, let it dry out a bit, soak them up, and it'll all be good. So that's a little station. That was in Canada, too. In Canada. Back to it. Uh, resistive. Is that one probe? It's a U type. It's a U shaped probe. Automatic setup would be neat. Moisture. Heck, I'm just reading down here. Can you get them for your lawn? Is the probe in one pot? Yes, it is. Cool and loop. The probe's in one pot. It's a it's a U shaped meter. Must be hard to calibrate each nozzle. Oh, yeah, you can run them off a car battery. Oh, you could too, mate. I've just got 12 volt, you know, like your um, mobile phone chargers. I got a 12 volt one of them and cut one of them off and wired it up that way. But you could do it off a car volt battery. Actually, it lasts forever off a car volt battery. It's an even better idea, mate. Off grid. Um, can you get one for your lawn? Yeah you, can put, yeah, you can get it for your lawn. You can get it for anything that's any substrate. It's just not in for soil. It's any substrate. It'll. It's just telling you any, what moisture is around the probe, at, and you can put the probe in anything, really. All right, so I hope that helped. Very good. Thank you, everybody. At least I showed one slide. <laughs> so good on you for the moisture show today. Um, and that's about all I have to say. I hope you all heard that. what was in the words there in that video. How much does the pro cost? Okay, that's about only thing I haven't covered. Thanks, Monty. Monty asks, how much does the probe cost? I'm going to find it for you. Digital moisture meter. It should be in. No. No. Okay, I'll find it a different way. I'll go to this place first. Yep. And then I'll pull it up. It costs 20 Australian dollars, so it's only like 15 US dollars. It's really cheap and really beneficial. No. Digital moisture meter. All right, I'll put in soil. Oh, 2,000. We'll go to the highest first. I'm trying to find it for you guys. 1,000. Digital still trying to look. Here we go. Narrowing down the results. No. No. Come on. Get away from the Bunnings ones. Scientific. Thirty one dollars. It's not that expensive. I put in the wrong words then. Oh, far out. It's not coming up. Digital soil moisture meter. Um, I'm still trying, Monty. Damn it. This would have really concluded the show so nicely. Um, uh, you kind of saw the meter, but you want to see. There it is. Yay. Ten bucks. Hang on. I'm going to share my screen. Hang on, it's not a three-piece. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It just gives you the idea of what it looks, what it is. Yes, this is it. Sweet. Share screen. Found it, Monty. Everybody. Here we go. Conclusion to the show. Uh, entire screen. Stop it. Uh, sorry, press the wrong button. Here it is here. It's a three-piece moisture. Moisture meter. It's got that U-shaped probe. Uh, this isn't the one that I was in. The, it's got a digital display, but that's the probe. 
you saw this display from the video before and then these are the probes that are attached to it see how there's two uh, there's two probes there so these are generic so that's just um you buy a few of them they're about two bucks each three bucks each and after two years they'll corrode and stuff and won't read properly um that's it and then you get a different don't get this one because you're not going to know a an output there's no digital display you have to connect this up to something else to get a, a reading from it so i just i just typed in then digital so yeah, that's the word I missed. Yeah, digital soil moisture meter, and it came up with this. So you'd be looking for that probe type connecting to a digital display, and I paid about twenty dollars. I've got a couple of them. Stop sharing screen. Good on you, Monty. Back to this one. Uh, what's cool? What's the probes cost? There you go. Hydrex boats. I Aussie Autos reckons you can get them for four hundred bucks at the um, hydro shop. Jesus, what well, you can get, God, I should have a blimmin, a, um, what do you call it, those, a shop, shouldn't I? Put all my little things in there that work for me and put a zero on the end and still make top dollar. I'm making nothing out of all this. The setup would be cheap or quick, but if you had no time at home, could be worth it. It's just good to dial stuff in, mate. That's about it. Just another gauge to know what's happening, really. Cool, and Luke wouldn't. Get them at 50. Oh, yeah. Monty Hydra experts have, have them. I don't know, mate. And they are ripping people off. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, just what I was sort of saying before. It's fascinating. But they're not really ripping people off. It's, this is marketing. And because it's a niche market, this stuff, everyone's capitalizing. It's just insane. Everyone but me. Thanks, CC. You're welcome, Monty. Uh, ha -ha, Luke. You could have links to stuff you have on eBay and get a slice. Really? I'm not really up with technology, sort of one bit. Um, that'd be pretty snazzy. Because <laughs> I've just gone and sold some product for someone else and made them money. Wow. Yeah, I'll learn one day. Um, Blue Labs has great stuff. Baker reckons, buy it once, last forever. Yeah, that's the stuff you want, isn't it, mate? Different brands and functions, I suppose, if it monitors CO2 as well. CO2 monitors are uh, so, so beneficial. Because remember, 95% of a plant's nutrient requirements comes from the air. And of that, those three elements, uh, one of them is carbon dioxide. And it's 45% of its requirements of the plant comes from the air of carbon dioxide. So it's extremely important to know what that level is as well. And for that meter, I use just a normal CO2 meter. You can get them actually for about 50 bucks now. Don't know how accurate they are. I've used a data logging one, which is about 120, which I've had for many years and it's fine. It connects permanently. That's what you want. You want a permanent display because the, the level always changes, goes up and down a lot. Uh, I suppose in a sealed room it wouldn't be. Again, it's different. I think they call them affiliate links. Dead set. Affiliate links. So I just got to get some affiliate links, eh? Whack them in a shop, and then there you go, make some money. Do you want to work for me, Cool and Luke? I'll give you some. I'll, I'll give you a cut. <laughs> you can set it up. <laughs> All right, that's it. I've been going 45 minutes now. It's nearly a hardcore full on time. Thank you, everybody, for your good questions. Thanks, everybody, for trying to keep it real, keep it alive, and keep it positively flowing for everybody. Because moisture, temperature, Aussie Autos, one last question, he says, there's moisture, temperature, and I think he's missing a bit of the question. There's moisture, temperature, and PPM. Okay. Haha, <laughs> cheers. Yeah, I wasn't joking, mate. <laughs> I wasn't joking. <laughs> uh, good on you, Cool and Luke, and Aussie Auto, Monty, Baker, everybody else rocking up. Who else is our scroll up? Say good day. Give some shout outs. Walking Lightly, Mick S, Lene, Google E, uh, Wombat, PTP, uh, Walking Lightly, I said that. 
Aussie Gross shows, even though he speaks bad about me, I'll still mention him because I'm not bad. I'm not a drama person. Jez a chronic. Oh, Jez a chronic. I'm just about to bail, mate. Hi, CC. Hi, in chat. I heard you add, you can add a CO2 by carbonated water to the root zone. Is that a thing? Uh, no, it's not because carbonated water, the carbonated water well that's got carbon so and hydrogen in there too because of water and that's going to put protons in the mix which is going to alter your substrate so your ph of your substrate because it's the hydrogen ions so i wouldn't suggest that also it reacts carbon uh, what's that carbonate reacts with calcium is it and precipitates so it forms it changes its status i wouldn't do that and also co2 um gets absorbed from the plant through its stoma the stomata sorry stoma is one so it's little pores underneath the leaves those little um uh lip looking things they that's how it gets the co2 so i wouldn't do that mate yeah like soda stream no nah, it's it's a it's a myth it's, well, it's not going to, it's not a myth. You can do it, but the results won't be beneficial. They won't um, improve things, I think, and that's what you're looking for with those sort of 1% tricks. That's one of them I wouldn't try. Or if you do try, you try it and let me know, but that's just from what I understand how it works. I don't think it's a positive thing. Oh, that was the question. Yes. Good question though, Jezza. Hey, eh? very good question, mate. The very good question. <laughs> oh, here we go. Baker Perkins, Gene Simmons, I like him, is the master of selling stuff. He sells Kiss Air guitar strings and has a new air guitar. <laughs> what? He's selling an air guitar. There you go. <laughs> I used to watch that show. It was a pretty cool show. Gee whiz. He sells anything. That's funny. Good, good statement. <laughs> uh, Jezza, like soda stream water. I heard it works. Yeah, might be. I don't think it's going to be beneficial, mate. It's something that's bro science, I think, would um, really run with. Yeah, Jezza, carbonated water. Yep, sound cool. Thanks for confirming. I'm curious about the interaction with plants and electrics. I've heard a story from this guy that's that one corner of his yard has power lines going above it and he says his plants always grow better under them. Wow, electromagnetic induction. You can get an ELF meter and um, you can test that. And if you put, what that person should be doing is he puts, he should put a wire at 90 degrees to the electrical lines and that will induce a current into it and he can get free electricity. So if he can get, if his plants are so close to it that he gets that, that's something that you can tell that fella to do, mate, and that actually works. That's some electrical engineering stuff. Um, induces it. So, but would it work for plants? Well, I don't know is the short answer. And I know frequency attracts uh, 200 hertz frequency. The roots grow towards that frequency. Uh, I know that vibration technology is another strigolomorphogenic practice um, that the fellow who's patenting that in the States, he reckons that works really well. Even though I've only seen, he showed me only one photo though. I'd like to see a fair few of it. So personally, I wouldn't think so. How does the electricity interact with our cells? is the question and if it was too high it would nearly burn them like if we got electrocuted uh if they're in the ground i think they might grow differently to if they're in pots because being earthed it might create an electrical pathway for the plants to get induced and then travel through the ground but in pots i don't think there would be any difference so i think this person would have them in the ground planted in the ground saying above any plants yep um yeah i'm i don't know mate it's a bloody good question i to personally think i th i don't think so i don't think that yeah the power oh here we go underneath it 
I wonder if the power ionized nitrogen in the air. Oh, well, that crackling is, that's how lightning works with, and that's how they make uh, nitrogen urea in the la in the fertilizer companies. They use high amounts of, like lightning, they create high, I think it's high temperature, high arcing, high, something like that. So that might work if it was like thunderstorms, like thunderstorm regions, when your the rain comes down, you get a lot more nitrogen in your rain because that's what the thunder, the lightning has done. So you're correct with that one, full hand loop. I wonder, mate, that's interesting. But I sort of don't think so because if it was ionizing the air, that means he'd have a big green, there'd be always be green patches underneath all those power lines. And if you see the power lines, they're not really like that. Um, and that would be wasted energy. They'd probably, the engineers would have maybe realized that and done something to try and retain that energy, not have so many losses at a guess. This is all guessing. It's a great question. Again, cool hand Luke, good on you. Like a dipole antenna. Uh, so you rig them up, wire them different. You might be able to, um, so what about if you get a coil and if you wrap it around the stem, if you get like copper, wrap it around the stem, wire it going up the plant, and then that will definitely induce a frequency. You could connect the probe at the bottom to a positive and then the other one to the soil and then see if um, what type of millivolt reading you're getting out of it. But that would um, induce current. And But you'd have to be a bit closer to... We're talking about, um, for those high-voltage lines, they're re, like your normal street lines is about, about a metre away. So those high voltage lines, I think it's about two and a half meters odd way, they'll induce a, a current. So anything out of that, any say three meters or 10 feet, it won't happen. So the person being on the ground too, he um, his plants would be definitely further away from that because they maintain that. Still interesting topic. <laughs> uh, Jazza said Frankenstein plants, yeah. They'd be inducing all sorts of gene mutations and you get a weird action happening. They just grow one big solid bud as a tree. You put a hammock around it. <laughs> anyway, this is, I really appreciate everybody's questions. Good on you, Cool and Luke, for your interesting questions. Um, they were really interesting. And you wrote the title for today's show Moisture. Good on you. So I'll go back and alter it. Thanks, everybody, for turning up. Appreciate your efforts. And, um, I might see you next week for the, this time in seven days, I'll do the open, the open stream and we can have a chat. And if you're gonna smoke, smoke off screen and try not to swear. Uh, all right, thanks everybody for turning up. Appreciate it. Have a great conversation, obviously. Looking forward to checking out your future streams. Oh yeah, okay, thanks mate. There's been some good topics. Um, good on you, Jamie. So I might see you next, this time in, 168 hours or 167 hours is a week because um, it'll be an hour ago and so you can get your stopwatches going. Countdown started. See you next week for your open open streams. Happy breeding. No, good health, good breeding and happy health to you. Wow, I said that the opposite. But it's good to be different, isn't it? <laughs> Thanks, guys. Have a good day and good night to you. Bye-bye.